one of the things that I normally have when I'm in, in class with my students is, and, and I've noticed something, you know, uh, sometimes we just don't know our audiences. We don't, we just don't pay attention to our audiences. Uh, I was once working with some students, for example, just to make my point clear here, uh, and I asked them to create a radio station, for example. And then they started telling me, okay, I want to do a hip hop station. Okay, but uh, no, I want to do a hip hop with R&B and rock. Okay, but how are you going to do that? And who's going to listen to you? Because if you ask me, and that's why we have formats in radio stations, because basically we have to zero in on a certain kind of audience. That's what we call a target audience, right? So what is necessary for us that we want to go into marketing to know about our target audiences or maybe just the term in itself audiences okay so so this is this this is part of the big idea of content strategy so let me let me take it just a step back real quick so content strategy is about knowing what your positioning is right and that's what you mentioned so if i am going to be doing a radio show and i'm going to focus on r and b i need to position myself based on that pillar which is r b now how do i know that r b is the right pillar to choose is my audience okay so for me to understand who my audience is what i get when i when i when i when i talk about audiences is people are like yeah it's a uh, male female 18 to 35 um you know uh people and that's it i don't know if they're urban suburban I don't know if they are married. I don't know if they use the internet. I don't know if they watch cable. I don't know if they listen to radio stations. I don't know if they use app apps. I don't know if they have an iPhone. So in order to, to, to talk about audiences, this could be a workshop all on its own in order to understand what audiences are. But the importance of having an audience is going to determine a, a bunch of things about your content strategy because it's going to it's going to it's going to let you know what tone of voice you want to talk about and that's part of the positioning it's going to let you know what um how complicated or how simple you want your message to be so if i were doing something uh if i were talking today to people at Na nasa i wouldn't be talking uh about audiences in 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 very um in very romantic terms, I would be talking more about statistical terms because NASA astro astronauts are math geniuses. So even though I'm talking about the same content strategy, my tone and my level of communication changes from audience to audience. So an audience is very important, it's very key so that you can start developing what your content is about, how you're gonna position it, and then how you're gonna deliver it, where you're gonna deliver it, okay? So that's what I think about uh, when I think about audiences. It's a complete uh, it's a complete different animal that needs its own space and it needs its own determination in order to uh, develop your content strategy. And that's really, really something to consider, you know, because I think that mostly uh, a lot of people fail when it comes to not knowing their target audiences when they just don't read what people want from 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 product from brands from all those kind of things and uh, and, and that takes us uh, to another point here which is branding uh, yeah. we can brand anything you know uh, we can brand I can brand myself as a matter of fact I do and, and Fabio I think does the same thing with him uh, and each of one of you guys can do branding for your own as well but you can also brand products how do we do that is there a way, is there a formula, or is it just something that we need to have stats, knowledge of the target audience for us to be able to brand something? So it's a combination of things. I think branding, when people talk about branding, they always think about the logo, or they always think about the motto. Uh, they always think about these very simple, subjective things, okay? But the brand is the essence, it's the spirit of, the, of, of a product, a brand, a service. Um, so it, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. And what 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 I mean by spirit is it when I've developed brands, the easy question is what I am to define what that brand is. That's the easy question, right? We can go on and create paragraphs and create 
you know, all sorts of imagery and we can create all sorts of activities around what it is. But what is really hard for a, for the for the creation of the brand is answering the question, what am I not? What am I not is the first question you need to ask yourself. So write this down, guys. Whenever you are talking about positioning, the development of your brand, whenever you're talking about these things about your content strategy, the first question you need to answer after you define what it is that you want to talk about is what you are not. And I'll give you a quick example. I'll go back to beverages. The number one reason why Coca-Cola, Sprite, Fanta, let's just go with those three main soda brands from the Coca-Cola company, are number one in their categories. So what I mean by categories is, which is the number one uh, caffeine, caramel, cola in the world, Coca-Cola? Which is the number one caffeine transparent soda, Sprite? Which is the number one orange flavored soda in the world, Fanta? The reason is because each one, all three of them are carbonated soft drinks. All three of them have sugar. All three of them have, you know, their distinct flavors. But the difference is in the positioning, in the brand, what it's not. Fanta cannot be Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola cannot be Fanta. Sprite cannot be either of the two, either. Why? Because Coca-Cola is about happiness. Coca-Cola is about sharing. Coca-Cola is about, uh, you know, the polar bear for Christmas, right? You don't see Sprite participating in commercials for Christmas. You don't see Sprite participating in, you know, commercials that have to do with younger audiences. What you see with Sprite is being an irreverent brand, being a transparent brand, being that hip brand. That's what it's looking for. It's that new generation of people coming in. That's what Sprite is all about, right? And Fanta, Fanta is a drink that is that is very young, and it's and it's and it goes back to nostalgic flavors. It's it it talks about oranges. It takes you back to when you were a kid and you were drinking orange juice. So it's a much younger brand, and it's it's, it's uh. It, it, it's 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 less mature and so each of these have their their fields very well drawn out so that they don't intersect and that is why each of these brands is the number one leader of their categories you can't say the same thing for other brands um you know if you were to look at <clears throat> if you were to look at um for example you know, Publix brands. Publix will have a, a caffeine cola, it will have a transparent cola, and it'll have an orange flavored cola, but they won't have distinct names. They are public carbonated, uh, Publix carbonated beverages. And so therefore, yes, what they're doing is they're condensing their marketing strategy onto three different types of sodas into one consolidated uh, marketing uh, strategy. But because all three of them are blended in, Nobody can figure out whether which one's good or not. Nobody you know, can figure out this one obeys to me or not. Go ahead. One thing that I normally talk about Coca-Cola is the fact, and, and you're talking about branding, and I think it's important to have this here and, and throw it at, at, at you guys as well. Uh, if Coca-Cola is the most recognizable name in the planet, I'm not talking about the U.S., in the planet, no, there's no living human being that doesn't know you, you, you've got to be on a jungle or something like that not, not to know what Coca-Cola is. But every living human being knows what Coca-Cola is. And then I would ask you, um, Fabio, why still, if Coca-Cola is one of the most recognizable brands in the world, and everybody knows it, why does it spend billions of dollars in advertising money each year? If they don't need to, everybody knows them. Well... The the battle in fast moving consumer goods is fierce. I mean, this is this is this is as you know. I think that the other battle that's just as fierce is probably politics. Um, but to lose one percentage of of market share for a cola brand, it means it means a lot to them. Um, and that is one of the things that people have to decide. You're either a leader, <clears throat> and you are comfortable being a leader, or you are the second one. 
and you're a profitable second one. Um, and it just depends on the strategy that you have. So Coca-Cola spends their money in advertising and it, and it does it because repetition of the message of the brand is what keeps it top of mind and is what keeps it valuable and is what keeps, you know, the, the, the engines running in each of these plants that produce these colas. Yes, you're right. The, the original Coca-Cola glass bottle was designed with the purpose of that if it broke and shattered into a million pieces, people would still be able to recognize that that broken glass can be put together, glued together again, and it would become a Coca-Cola bottle again. The silhouette is recognized. The, uh, this, the, uh, the ribbon is recognized. So all of these things play into what Coca-Cola has invested in terms of their communication and their positioning so that every, every single aspect of that individually and together make the brand Coca-Cola. And not many companies do that. Not many companies do that. The other brand marker that was great, and I know that you love talking about, is, is Steve Jobs. I mean, if, if you could look at Steve Jobs in a silhouette, two colors, black and white, you'd be able to recognize him a, a mile away. Everybody here in this, in this forum would be able to recognize him. Um, if you were to go over to the Gap store and find a mannequin that had a black turtleneck and blue jeans, you'd go like, hey, I recognize that outfit and it's going to be Steve Jobs, right? You could go over to the New Balance store and purchase white New Balance and fix them up with blue jeans and you'd be half, half, half a uh, Steve Jobs. And that's just because that was part of his branding. You know, he, 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 he entitled that. I use, I use the same things when I do my branding. I tell, I tell all my students and I'll show you. Yellow is one of my favorite colors. So I've got a yellow iPhone. I haven't changed it. The battery sucks on this thing, but it's yellow. My wallet on the inside is yellow. Um, my watch, my Apple iWatch has yellow straps. Um, my notebooks are yellow. The background of my screen that you were looking in, that I'm looking towards is yellow. And so these are things that are part of my brand. These are things that I build on top of my brand and people will remember that. Um, unconsciously they'll remember that and so these are tips and tricks that you should be adding to your repertoire whenever you're thinking about your brand and we could talk about the theory of colors as steve jobs and and as fabio escobar used the theory of colors to be able to become distinct characters 